Welcome. In this module, we're going to talk about email and web browser protections. And uh, I'd like to mention here that uh, most of the users in the enterprise are usually allowed to access the web. And uh, one of the major attack vectors uh, in terms of security is on the web. And that's why the web browser is a very vulnerable element uh, because the web browser is the first um, asset that actually um, is, is playing a role to, uh, to download the information from the web being the client. So whatever the vulnerability, usually the attacks and the malware um, is directed to the web browser to try to uh, compromise the web browser or there may be vulnerabilities in the web browser itself and then it's very easy to break in into the user computer because once you compromise the web browser, then that can create, uh, the, the attacker may try to create further inroads from the web browser itself. And also, uh, because email is one of our primary modes of communication, there are thousands of uh, emails which are sometimes exchanged uh, between, you know, which come to the organization. There are dozens of, of emails that each user is sending on a daily basis uh, within the organization and to the outside world. And there are dozens of emails which you are receiving from the outside world. So the uh, phishing attacks, for example, are, uh, are, are used uh, through email. And that becomes the attack vector. So email um, uh, is, is also very, very important to protect. And we need to protect against spam uh, in, in the email and malicious attachments in the email and other uh, malicious emails that are coming through. So uh, this is another look at the graphic. We're looking at CIS controls version 7. And we've moved on to the foundational controls. And control number 7 is email and web browser protections. Now I'd like to mention control 7.1, ensure use of only fully supported browser and email clients. So ensure that only fully supported web browsers and email clients are allowed to execute in the organization, ideally only using the latest version of the browsers and email clients provided by the vendor. So uh, what sometimes what happens is that um, the uh, users will install their own uh, version of the web browser or the email client and this may not be approved by the organization and the version may be old. So this is something that needs to be restricted uh, by the IT team and the information security team to make sure that the approved versions and approved browsers and the hardened versions are deployed and uh, only those ones are allowed. And this is part of the software inventory control, um, one of the earlier uh, CSE controls that we looked at. 7.2. Disable unnecessary or unauthorized browser or email client plugins. So sometimes what happens is that um, uh, malicious uh, uh, attacks will automatically and uh, in a very discreet manner will enable uh, plugins and that creates um, a channel to install additional scripts or software on the browser which may run and that may be malicious or it may cause other uh, types of disruptions, which is like the, in the working of the browser client and in terms of the uh, performance of the browser client. So uninstall or disable any unauthorized browser or email client plugins or add-on applications. And whenever an audit is con conducted, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are, we are uh, restricting the plugins and we are training the users also not to enable additional plugins. 7.3. Limit use of scripting languages in web browsers and email clients. Now, ensure that only authorized scripting languages are able to run in all web browsers and email clients. And this is something that we can go uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the advanced settings in the browser. And if there is an enterprise uh, a panel on which you can control the browser settings for all the uh, user computers and all the uh, browsers in the enterprise which users are using, uh, that can be controlled uh, through the central administration as well. Uh, maintain and enforce network-based URL filters. This is control number 7.4. So enforce network-based URL filters that limit a system's ability to connect to websites not approved by the organization. This filtering shall be enforced for each of the organization systems, whether at the organizational facility or not. So this is a typical web filtering solution. It could be done through an appliance, it could be done through software, and now most of the next generation firewalls are 
uh, they, can, they have this function where the web filtering is performed. And the categorization of the websites is also done, and there's a huge database uh, which uh, is restricted. For example, malicious websites or other types of unproductive websites. Um, the administrators can limit them so that the users cannot access those. And this is a major, major uh, effort or very, very important activity which protects the organization from, um, uh, from access to, from getting attacked by malware. And 7.5 is subscribe to URL categorization service. Subscribe to URL categorization services to ensure that they are up to date with the most recent website category definitions available. Uncategorized websites shall be blocked by default. So this is something which could be performed in an automated manner by your web filtering solution, which could be part of your next generation firewall, for example, or you may purchase a separate um, and leading a web filtering uh, a product in terms of either the software or the hardware. And sometimes, um, if you're looking at open source, then uh, you can also uh, install the URL categorization service so that it will give you the breakup or it will enable you um, to restrict websites by category, as this control states. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.